Without spoiling a thing, let me say that the scene where Alfin stands up on a cliff and shouts his name moved me more than many musical masterpieces could shine down on me. At first, I didn't know why. I could just downplay this scene to slave overcomes ruler, just so I could come across as cynical for the sake of it, but let's be real, it's not that unique of a thing to do. But how does one compliment such a simple yet compelling scene? I could credit the superb shots, stupendous cinematography, or even just Ray Chase's stellar voice acting, all of which are valid points to postulate, but none accurate to accentuate. However, I think that this scene being so impressively empowering speaks volumes as to how well Tales of Arise gets the player enticed by its protagonist. And to figure out how they did it, let's craft an analysis. <laughs> To find out why Alfin is such a great protagonist, we need to look at the first few scenes of the game. Most people underestimate the power of a good introduction. Can't vibe with a character if you don't know who he is or what he's about, you know? The best protagonists are the ones that can express themselves in a short amount of time while leaving enough room to fleshing them out. And that's exactly how Alfin is introduced. The beginning of the game features Alfin stepping in front of a Renan guard to protect a Dan and child from getting bludgeoned. He gets in a little squabble with the guard, but the guard is called to a regroup and Alfin ends up doing the hard labor for the kid, only to end up bleeding from the beating. It may be a somewhat standard scene, but think about how much it tells the player about Alfin right off the bat. Renans run this plantation of Danans, but Alfin shows no restraint in fighting back in small ways if he has to, never being afraid to protect his fellow Danans even if it means risking his life, which doesn't even faze him since he can't even feel his body being sliced. This also shows how reckless he is with how much pain he takes, and it's further elaborated upon when he has to go get his flesh wounds treated, which he only does because the child he saved recommended him to do so. Otherwise, Alfin could have potentially died from wounds that he didn't even notice, unable to feel pain yet eager to take on everyone else's. This anecdote leads into how he has a bit of a reputation among Dana, being dubbed Iron Mask after the alloy-based face covering. Ooh, semiotics! Dan and malicious! Mostly malicious though, as no one else in Dana is forced to wear such a crippling cover, or have amnesia. Oh great, they're being malicious to me too. For reasons that I'll get into later, I really don't like the amnesia trope. Good thing that I can't feel pain either. What? I'm enjoying it here. Alfin is not dedicated to finding his lost memories, but they're used as a motivation to rise against the Renans as well as to live and taste freedom. It also nuances his recklessness and naivete. On the surface, how are you gonna achieve your goals if you don't even know who you are? But below the surface, he's ignorant. Not just about himself or the world around him, but also about how to deal with many situations. Often leaping before looking and charging into the scene without understanding what the scene even is. But at the same time, it means that he doesn't see the issue in helping out another Renan, at least one that's being hunted by other Renans. In fact, now that she's in the room, let's talk about Shion real quick. I know that this video is supposed to be about Alfin, and it is, but Tales of Arise has an emphasis on duality as one of its themes. Shion's contrast to Alfin is obvious at first glance. He is a Danon, she is a Renan. He was a slave, she wasn't. He can't feel pain, she causes pain with a touch. But it becomes deeper than that when you break down their personalities. Xion is more cautious and careful while at the same time more straightforward and blunt, contrary to Alfin's reckless kindness. But even if she doesn't show it much, she's still willing to help other people with her healing powers. Yeah, she's a Sundere, and according to the false prophets of YouTube University, nuances don't exist and aren't a allowed to exist. Well, sorry professors, but your degree was half-baked. Because these nuances are frequently elaborated on. Some of them do take place later on in the game, but you can still establish a strong dynamic between your lead characters as early as possible. If anything, you should. And that's how Xion is utilized. She's always preventing Alfin from doing anything foolish, such as using the blazing sword without her consent, charging into enemy territory without a strategy, or watching a video by John Frost Productions without liking, commenting, subscribing, or watching some of his older videos. All of these things would be really stupid, you know? Sometimes her orders will compete with what Alfin is thinking. This conflict between the two is always inevitable, but I know some perfectly balanced traits iron into their relationship. 
Though you do have side characters like Zephyr that help encourage Alfin to decide what he's fighting for, even giving him a cleaner outfit than his torn cloths, but his best side is shown in how he interacts with Shion. When he understands that she has a heart despite being forced to shove people aside, he helps bring out this side of her more often, guns, roses, thorns, and all, and Shion will learn to come across as more caring than overbearing. This makes Alfin strong enough as is, but did you forget that he doesn't even take care of himself? That's what the point of the semiotics mask is. I'm not referencing any fraudulent degenerates, you can't make me! Once we reach Balsef, we get this scene where Alfin tears off his mask as his name begins running through his head. And let me tell you, once I got to this scene, I was not surprised in the slightest because this scene was shown literally everywhere in the trailers for this game. But you know what? I was still impressed with how this scene was conveyed. It's revealed early on that the mask doesn't come off easily. That is until the fight with Balsef where it does come off easily, at least a part of it. It's not explained to the player right away, but it's less about how he took it off and more about what taking it off represents. It's a sign that he learned how to be less reckless and that he figured out what he's fighting for, which, yes, is kind of basic. Oh, you cynical critics make me ARG! I guess that presentation doesn't exist to you people either, huh? Or even layers as, if you think about it, this actually resolves his amnesia arc. To put this into perspective, my biggest qualm with the amnesia trope is that it always ends the same. They get their memories back, they realize who they are, and they declare that their past doesn't matter anymore. You know, the very thing that they were so dedicated to finding, for some reason, it is not important and it never was. It's such a waste of development. I personally believe that Amnesia can only work as a stepping stone for a much bigger character arc, and Tales of Arise supports this idea. Alfin already gets his memories back in this scene, at least the vital ones. Again, not the whole mask. The difference being that his past actually matters to him even after remembering what it is, and instead of choosing to throw it all away, it further motivates him to free the Danans. Why not let other people live and taste freedom as well, you know? And rubbing that freedom in the face of his tyrannical lord makes his triumph <clears throat> It then leads into that scene I mentioned at the beginning of this video and why it's so amazing. This scene is proof that Alpha knows what he wants to fight for and why. This scene is proof that he has evolved from an ignorant slave to a resilient force of nature. This scene is proof that he has learned to work with Shion in a riveting way. This scene is proof that Alpha is an enticing protagonist. But now it begs the question, where does he go from here? And why should we continue to follow him? Well, that's what the rest of the game is for. Ignoring the fact that there are still four more party members that we haven't even met yet, he still wants to save the Danans in the other realms despite barely knowing anything about them. It's because of this ignorance that makes the player want to see where his journey goes. Flaws do make a character interesting. Even though he has a part of his character arc completed, the best has yet to come. I'm not gonna spoil most of what happens after this as you should honestly play the game for yourself, and better yet, just go play a Tales game as long as it's not Zysteria because I don't want you doing anything stupid and hurtful. But I do need to give a shout out to this little exchange here. I just think you'd look good with a little blue thrown in somewhere. Okay, sadly, I couldn't find a clip that shows this, but there's this one scene where Alfin is talking about his armor, and then Shion asks about the blue scarf, and he says that he only put the scarf on because he listened to her on the accounts that he thought that he would look better with a bit of blue somewhere. I mean, he was already wearing blue on his older uniform and even his cloth, but still, that's brilliant! This game is brilliant! Imagine not playing this game! Over No More Heroes 3. Yeah, I know I said that I would be playing through No More Heroes 3, but, well... I haven't made a lot of progress on that game, so to make up for it, maybe I'll make a separate video on that game? Speaking of future videos... Hey, John! Where's the Berseria video? It's coming! It's coming! I just have to finalize a few things in the script so that it fits better with my next video, which may or may not be Tales-related as well! 